Okay, I know what everybody's thinking. Here we go again. But this is a special thank you video. We made a deal on YouTube where we did some trading instead of buying. And I traded two motors for some parts. And as part of the deal, I sent uh, B. Anderson a uh, new case for his clock through the person that I had traded these parts from. This is also a test video testing out my new camera that I'd gotten. This is an actual real camera. As you can see, it's not a point and shoot, but it's a real camcorder. Pretty sweet. And I'm going to be shooting a video with this. Let's see how it comes out. So I'm assuming in this box is some parts of Numicron clocks. And all three of us helped each other out and we all paid for our own shipping. Which was really cool. Bubble wrap. And yes, it is an Umicron. Some beat up wheels. Now what I'm planning on doing is having a sign guy make stickers. Frame. Now this frame doesn't have the mount for this uh, Synchron style motor, so I have to use an adapter plate, which I do have one if I want to run it. This is extra light bulbs and sockets. I run all LEDs in these now. Okay, this is another frame. This frame has the extended tab to use the Synchron motor. This one's meant to use the Telecron style motor, which screws to these two holes, where the Synchron screws to these two holes. Now, when they were doing the changeover in the 1950s, they had adapter plates. And once you screw the adapter plate on to the side of the frame, then you can run the Synchron motor. This adapter plate will go right back to 1935. extra switches. I know the guy does know that I like to add lights to the clocks that didn't have lights because some did and some don't. And this is the real bizarre one. This frame is a little bit different. The seconds wheel is built into the frame and has the gear and looks like it's set up to run a Hansen four screw motor like that's used in a washing machine timer but yet the two bottom screws again will line up with a standard adapter plate and let you run a standard motor also the bezel instead of attaching down here like they normally do it attaches on the top so I think this come out of uh, like a Heath kit ham radio console or something where it was mounted instead of on the bottom it was mounted to the front of the ham radio this one the uh, minutes brush is gone it has the original 1930 style minutes or retention detent clips so that's cool these are going to be 
used by the sign guy. I'm going to try to have him copy these fonts and do them in stick on vinyl. This is where I do my testing. Now this red one is my latest Numicron. It's the typical Saith Thomas uh, 110 or speed read. And the minutes brush clip was just toast in this thing. It was completely ground off. There was nothing left. And I did come up with a way that you can get a second chance out of these clips. And to show you, I drew like a very large picture of sort of what they look like. It's supposed to have this extra piece here that sticks into the side of the wheel. Well, if you can see it or not, and rides in these little lot, little uh, detents, and that those are kind of critical on the minutes because if this thing drifts just slightly out of place, the motors will jam, and it can burn the motors out if they're jammed up or strip out the threads or the gears. So that minutes clip needs to be working, and. This is about how it was worn off. There was just a little tiny bit left. And what I've been doing is swapping it with the tents, which is what everybody does. And then also taking and cutting it down a little. I'm gonna set this down a second. I trim the arm like so and and then I trim this so that this is parallel to this line this line is parallel to this line to get 3 eighths of an inch from what's left of the minutes brush back to here and then where the screw is I simply swivel the thing over and the clip will function again. The only thing unfortunate with these clocks in most cases is these clips in here are way too tight. They push on them way too hard and they don't need to push on them that hard where it grinds them right to bits. They only need to just barely touch enough that they drop into the little notch and hold them in place. To this one also they ran it to death and there's no clip left. These original old style ones are actually already back farther and they're simple to rework them. So that's how I, I fix the, uh, the detent clips. It's pretty simple. Then I still take this one and I swap with the tents. The tents one also had a hole in it. The second issue with the clips is they seem to always be bent where the drum is just riding on the edge. So it just cuts right there and it actually cuts like a triangular notch out of it. And they're pushing way too hard and they need to be bent so if anything the very edge here touches first and then it backs off a little and but preferably perfectly straight and they only need very very minor pressure just enough that they lock in they were put way too tight at the factory they push way too hard it also makes the motor work a lot harder when it goes to change the hour and has to do all three of them so that's the main thing is servicing these that's the part that wears out and that's the part that needs lubrication. So again, I want to thank everybody involved. This little swap off with uh, B. Anderson and uh, the other guy worked out fantastic. All three of us got what we needed and it was a great help and I'd like to do that again someday. The Numicrons.